Okay, so we're going to solve this convolution problem. And we've got two square functions, one of which is from minus 1 to 1 and in time, and the other one from minus 2 to 2. And we want to convolve these. So we've got the formula for convolution. So yt equals the integral from minus infinity to infinity of x of tor times h of t minus tor d tor. Now, we first of all need to remind ourselves that this, what this function is. So we've got two functions multiplied by each other, x of tor and h of t minus tor. So you multiply the functions, and then what this integral means is you add up the area under the functions. And you do it, you're plotting them with respect to tor, because you're going to add up over tor. And let's make sure we know what that means. So we've got our function xt at the top, and let's plot, so that's, I'll plot it here in, uh, as x tor. It's xt at the top, but it's x tor, and we know that that's no different. We're plotting it with respect to tor, and it's the same function. We've just replaced t with tor. So that's that function. The other one we need to multiply by is related to this function, but it's a shifted version. And don't forget, we're plotting with respect to tor. This one is plotted with respect to t. We now need to plot it with respect to tor. So let's plot it with respect to tor. Now I'm going to pick a value of t. So it's plotted with respect to tor for a particular value of t. Now we need to work this out for all values of t, because we need yt for all values of t. Let me pick a value of t. I'm going to pick this one over here, just to start with, and hopefully you'll see why. So I'm picking a value of t which is quite a bit negative, and now I'm going to try and plot my function h of t minus tor, because we're going to multiply them together. So what is this function? Well, I like to first of all look and see what the value is at t. So when tor equals t, we've got h of, so we're going to put tor equals t, so it's h of 0. So what's h of 0? We look up here, h of 0 is the centre of this square function, and it equals 1. Okay, so we've got the centre of the square function is above the t. Okay, now where does this interesting point go? This is an interesting point on my square function. It's when the t equals 2. I prefer to say the thing in the brackets equals 2. So when does the thing in the brackets here equal 2? When it does, we'll find out where that point's gone. So what's the thing in the brackets? The thing in the brackets is t minus tor. When does that equal 2? We need to know the value of tor, because we're plotting with respect to tor. We need to find the value of tor when this holds. So let's see. That means tor equals t minus 2. So this interesting part of the plot has gone to the place of tor equals t minus 2. Well, where's that? Here's t. Here's t minus 2. t minus 2. So that interesting part of the graph has gone to there. And where's this interesting part gone? Well, when the thing in the brackets equals minus 2, the thing in the brackets equals minus 2. So what's the thing in the brackets here? t minus tor. When that equals minus 2, so that in, we've got to find it as a function of tor. So that means tor equals, we add tor to both sides and add 2 to both sides, and we get t plus 2. Okay, so that's gone here because that's t. This is t plus 2. Okay, so that's our function. And this is the way I really encourage you to think about it, thinking about convolution, drawing the plots and working out where the interesting parts of this function have gone when you're plotting it, because you're plotting it with respect to tor, not with respect to t. The reason you're plotting it with respect to tor is because that's what you're going to do the integral over. This is very important. Okay, so now what do we have to do to do the convolution? We have to multiply these two functions together and add up the area underneath them. So if I multiply these two functions together the way I've drawn them, then this here gets multiplied by 0 because the top function 0 and this part gets multiplied by 0 because the bottom function 0. So there's no overlap so the way I've drawn it for values of t that I've drawn the answer would be 0. Now which are the values that I've drawn it for? So what's it going to be 0 for? 0 certainly the way I've drawn it is going to be a value it's going to be 0 as long as for all values of t so we're thinking of shifting this t along here now 
for all values of t, because we've got to work it out for all values of t, so for all values of t where t plus 2 is less than minus 1. Okay, so I'm going to draw the answer down here. Okay, so we, this is the answer as a function of t because we're plotting yt. So we now need to plot yt. I'm just going to plot the answer. So for all values where t plus 2 is less than minus 1. So what's that? t plus 2 is less than minus 1. That means t has to be less than minus 3. Okay, so this is minus 1, minus 2, minus 3. So for all values of t less than minus 3, the answer is 0 because these two things don't overlap. Okay, now I'm going to take this function that was drawn there, I'm going to shift it along. So that's when it first starts overlapping. And when it overlaps a little bit more, we're going to have, a, we're going, it's going to be 0 for all of these values of, of, uh, of, t, of tor. Because don't forget we're plotting as a function of tor. Okay, so it's going to be 0 for t equals, for all values of t, which, for, sorry, for this value of t, we now have to multiply together and add up over tor. Okay, so for this value of t, there's a little bit of an overlap. So the overall function that we've got to add up the area of is going to be 0 up until here. Then it's going to have this overlap of these two. So this times this is that height times that height. So that's a times 1. So there'll be an overlap here, height a, with that amount of overlap, and then it'll be zero over, over here. And we add up the area. Now I think you can see if it's a little bit of overlap, then a bit more. Every time we shift, it's a, for a different value of t. That's on our axis at the bottom. Okay, so you can see that up until here, when it gets to here, when t gets as big as this, and then we start looking at here, it's still negative, it's still less than zero. This is zero here. So it's still less than zero, okay, uh, you're going to have almost no overlap. And then when it's equal exactly, in this case, because this is from here to here is 2, and from there to there is 2, when t equals minus 1, you're going to get a full overlap of the top function. Okay, so then this part here will be multiplied by 0, because it's 0 up here, times 0. And you'll, when you multiply those two functions together for this value of t, when t equals minus 1, you'll get, a, and then you add up the area, so you've got a height of a, because it's a times 1, and the width here is minus 1 to 1, so that's 2. So that's base times height, the area equals 2 times a. So when t equals minus 1, you'll have a height here of 2 times a. And then I think, hopefully you can see that as for all values of t that increase, you've still got a full overlap of the top function. So if all the way t equals 0, you've got a full overlap. This edge bits here get multiplied by 0 from above here and here, and you've still got the same area. And all the way up to t equals 1, you'll have the same area. So up to t equals 1, you'll have the same area. And then as t goes along here, the overlap starts getting less and less because the 0 from here multiplies part of that. And it goes all the way until t minus 2 equals 1. And for values of t, where t minus 2 equals 1, and any bigger value of t, there's no overlap. So when you multiply these together, you get 0. So the integral of 0 is 0. And so again, that is at height. If t minus 2 equals 1, that means t equals 3. So for values above 3, it's equal to 0. And in between, I think you can see that it's a linear increase in the overlap, which means it's a linear increase in the area. So this will be a straight line between there and there, and a straight line between there and there. Okay, so this is the answer for the convolution of those two functions.